Hey guys, Tyler here, and thank you for checking out this video. And it's hard to believe another major patch for World of Warcraft Dragonflight is finally upon us, and that means a new guide as well. So today I have a 10.2 Marksman Hunter guide for you guys, and this is a video that will be updated throughout the tier, so be sure and check the pinned comments and the description of the video for any changes after this video goes live. So without further ado, let's get started. Mr. Eggplant presents... And not only will I keep this video updated all tier long, but I will also have the timestamps down in the description of the video. I would encourage you guys to check out what section you're after. And then while you're down there, be sure and check out some of the other projects I have going on on my channel. We have a brand new WoW podcast called In the Mountains, where we have a lot of fun just talking about all things World of Warcraft with Glitchy and Zaft. I'm currently working on a, a hardcore duo character with my best friend Colton, who has come back to the game after almost 10 years. And then also, we are going to be going back live in the newest raid uh, with Drexit. So I will be uh, streaming my, my raids live on YouTube and Twitch starting next Tuesday and Wednesday. So let's go ahead and jump into the first section of the guide. So first, let's look at what's changed for us on our Marksman Hunter here in 10.2. And the long and short is not a lot. That could be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, but we saw two major changes, one to Hunter's Mark and the other to Windrunner's Guidance. So with Hunter's Mark, now whenever you apply it to a target that's above 80% health, it does take 5% increased damage from all uh, targets. So that's not just you, it's for your entire party. It's a nice little raid buff now. It equates to about uh, 1, 1.5% or so worth of overall uh, boost to your group damage. Whenever you use it on a target that is out of combat, there is no cooldown associated. When you use it on something that's in combat, or you should say you are in combat, it does incur a 20 second cooldown. And then Windrunner's Guidance was redesigned. So now each wind arrow lowers the remaining cooldown of rapid fire by half a second. And then every time you hit with eight wind arrows, it increases the duration of your next true shot by one second with a maximum of 10 seconds. So basically, TLDR, you want to try to get 80 arrows out every two minutes to get the max uh, duration of true shot. I'm excited to dive into these new talent builds, but first let's take a look at our stat priority on our Marksman Hunter. And luckily for us, this has not changed at all since last season. So we have our main DPS increaser is going to be our weapon DPS overall. It's our best stat in the game, followed by our main stat, which is going to be agility, and then crit strike and haste. And then you can see there it's up to diminished returns. And if you guys use the add-on true stat values, it will actually track this for you to see uh, how, how close you are uh, to hitting diminished returns, meaning you don't get full value. You only get 90% of value versus 100% per point. Uh, so I would just try to get crit and haste up to that as much as possible, then dump into mastery, and then finally versatility. And of course, in PvP, versatility is our highest secondary stat. And now on to our talent builds. And this first one is going to be for our single target Marksman Hunter build. And I'm going to go kind of quickly just because this really hasn't changed over the last... Uh, gosh, like two tiers now. So we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing on the hunter side of things. Fill out the rest of the tree here. And then we're going to fill out to get to Death Chakram, Serpent Sting, and Poison Injection. And then for the most damage for you on your hunter is going to be putting points in Steel Trap. You guys know me, I'm not a big fan of Steel Trap, so sometimes you'll see me put two points in Arctic Bola, and to even take one out of Serrated Shots and move it over here to Explosive Shot. That's a personal opinion of mine, but if you guys want to get the most damage out of this side of the tree, this is going to be the build for you. And then let's take a look on the marksman hunter side of things so we'll put uh, the point in aim shot and then just start going to town so my goal whenever i build these is go to get to my rapid fire and then buff my rapid fire and then get down here to true shot and also if you are still playing with the old um tier set you want to still run within the rhythm but once you get two and four set from uh the newest raid surging shots is going to be the way to go and from here we're going to put points in death blow razor fragments and get down to volley we're going to forego steady focus it's kind of cumbersome not as fun and you really don't get a ton of haste benefit out of it since we're going to be stacking haste like we just talked about anyway so then we're going to fill in with lone wolf careful aim and then fill out the rest of the tree so put points down here, 
and then we'll get true shot augment that true shot and then finally get our our unerring vision so this is what a a pretty good looking build is going to be for you for single target there are a few flex picks i guess the one real good flex pick I, I, I still want to run with improved steady shot. It makes my life so much easier. So that's not a flex pick for me. Could be for you, though. Uh, I would move the target practice down to maybe lock and load. Lock and load is very random. It's feast or famine. You could do really well or really poorly. But I think this would be a great build for you on your hunter for single target. And I will put the strings down in the description of the video for each of these. Now, let's look at the AoE build uh, for you on your hunter. So we're gonna go ahead and move the points away from Steel Trap and then put the point in Arctic Bola here and Explosive Shot there. Uh, so you could move this Concussive Shot point out of the top bit here and move it down to Camouflage if you're wanting to do this for a Mythic Plus situation. Move it over here to Entrapment, maybe Improve Trank Shot, the choice is yours on that one. And then over here on the Marksman side of the tree. So we do have to lose a few of these points here. So I'm going to take one point out of precise shots, one point out of target target practice, and then I'm going to take the two points, one from death blow and then one from razor fragments, and then move them here. So multi shot, then trick shots, then bullet storm, then salvo. So then salvo is still one of the strongest abilities for us right now uh, in our tree. Now there are a few flex picks uh, that you could use and the big one believe it or not is going to be bullet storm now because we're taking points out of precise shots we took a point out of target practice so our multi-shot isn't going to be doing as much damage and thanks to the freak amount of volleys that we get with our tier set with rapid fire you will not do as much damage with your multi-shot so because of that if you're doing big pulls in Mythic Plus situations, move this point from, rap, er, from Bullet Storm and then bring it over here and put it into light ammo so you can get more ricochets with your big abilities, which are going to be Aim Shot and Rapid Fire, which are doing more damage thanks to our build and thanks to our tier set. Now let's go ahead and check out the next section of the video. And this next section is going to be the early items that you can target on your hunter to get the most damage early on in the tier. And that first is going to start off with the two best trinkets, and one of them comes out of Mythic Plus, and one comes out of the raid. So the Mirror of Fracture Tomorrows is going to be a very sought-after trinket uh, from the Murazond Rise of Dawn of the Infinites. And then we have Pip's Emerald Friendship Badge, which is basically another icon that's going to be found in Amir Drasil. And then for me is crafting that that bow of the dragon hunters is a max 486 item level bow so it's technically not the highest that you could possibly get now that they changed uh, crafting gear just a little bit but rushing one of those early particularly if you're not doing mythic plus would be huge to increase your damage and then the other couple of items obviously is your tier set getting that two and four set as early as possible is going to be amazing those are all found in the raid and then we have the uh, the necklet that's going to come out of raid as well the reason this is such a sought after our item is because it gives you a nice fire shield which will definitely help you it can happen up to once a minute and then finally is going to be the signet of titanic insight and that is a crafted jewel crafting ring already comes with or you I should say you can pick your stats which is going to be great so crit haste or crit mastery haste mastery whatever is going to be good for you and your stat line and then it automatically has a socket and then you can also put the, the blue silk lining embellishment which is going to be bis for us at least right now on our marksman hunter and you're going to want to stack two of those blue silk linings if at all possible and speaking of tier sets, let's go ahead and take a look at our tier bonuses on our Marksman Hunter for Season 3. So for your 2 set, Rapid Fire deals 20% additional damage, and then Trick Shots causes the next Rapid Fire to launch a Volley for 6 seconds, which Volley will also give you Trick Shots for that 6 seconds, and it deals 100% of the normal damage with that Volley. And then keep in mind, Volley could be on cooldown, off cooldown, or not even picked and this will still give you a volley uh, in a single target or AoE situation. And then your four set reads as follows. Every 10 focus that you spend has a 3% chance to reset the cooldown of rapid fire and cause your next rapid fire to shoot 100% additional shots during the channel. So basically it will double tap your rapid fire for you, which means it does mondo damage. Ra rapid fire honestly is gonna hit like a nuke here in season three. And then also it does give you more focus regeneration as well. So 
that's something to keep in mind. And then you do have other abilities that will have a chance to give you your rapid fire cooldown and reset it completely, that being surging shots, which also increases the damage of rapid fire, so a win-win all around. And now let's go ahead and check out the rotations for both single target and for AoE, and then we'll do a little bit of opener work as well. So now let's take a look at our single target rotation priority, and this hasn't really changed much from Season 2 to Season 3, so I'll keep this brief. The one of the main changes, though, is going to be the addition to Hunter's Mark. It does make the list again, so since it does increase our damage done to the target when it's above 80% health, just make sure you're using Hunter's Mark before you pull, basically pre-pull. And then, for example, just use your kill shot on cooldown like most of these abilities on the screen right now. If you have trick shots up in a single target situation, be sure and use rapid fire on that to then get your bonus uh, volleys whenever you have your two and four set. And then, of course, use volley on cooldown. It says explosive trap there. I should have done a better job of editing this before I actually recorded this. It's supposed to say explosive shot. And if you take that versus steel trap, just be sure and use those on CD. Same way goes for Death Chakram and use your True Shot and you can delay True Shot just a little bit. You don't want to do that too much though. And then just make sure that you don't let your uh, charges of Aim Shot uh, cap out. That is the biggest way to lose damage on your hunter i promise you that and then if you do happen to have some precise shots that you need to dump focus with arcane shot's a great way to do that and steady shot as needed for focus regeneration so now let's take a look at our single target opener, and this is where we're going to get the most damage out of our build thanks to careful aim. So make sure you're putting Hunter's Mark on the target before pull, and then make sure that you're pre-casting your first aim shot with about two to two and a half seconds left on the pull timer. And it's nice to get back to pre-casting aim shots because it does boost our damage there at the very beginning. From there, then we're going to use rapid fire and then either steel trap or explosive shot if you've taken those. And whenever I say explosive shot in a single target situation, situation consider this you if you're doing a single target mythic plus boss you will have explosive shot so this is where you would use it in the rotation then follow it up with death chakram then volley then your true shot macro and that true shot macro would include true shot itself any racials your pre-pot um anything like that a trinket an unused trinket then you're going to use your aim shot aim shot rapid fire aim shot and then you're going to continue to do that until your true shot is finished and now on to our AoE or our Mythic Plus rotation priority. And uh, you can see right there at the top, if you do not have trick shots and you're trying to cast an aim shot or a rapid fire, use multi-shot first. That way you get that bonus ricochet damage from your rapid fire and for your aim shot. But other than that, just make sure that you're using kill shot on cooldown if you do have razor fragments as a talent point. From there, just use explosive shot on cooldown. You can delay that to hit more targets. That usually is a a great thing then death chakram on cooldown and you could delay that up to 10 seconds to try to line it up better with your true shot where you're going to be doing the most amount of damage possible and also you'll have that stacking amount of crit and then use your volley salvo uh, combination on cooldown that is a uh, a macro that i use so be sure and check out the macro list that i will have over in my discord and then i will put a link to that and in, an in invitation down there as well and then use your rapid fire on cd and again make sure you have trick shots up for that true shot on cooldown and that true shot would include the true shot macro like i said in single target and then make sure you're using aim shots on cd never let your aim shots uh completely cap out on charges that's the be best way to do less damage on your hunter and then multi-shot as needed to basically to dump focus or get trick shots and then steady shot as needed for focus regeneration and so finally, on to my AoE or my Mythic Plus opener. And then just like with single target, keep in mind, Hunter's Mark is something that you should be using on priority targets. Uh, and I would just do that as you're running up to uh, the pull. I wouldn't bother switching it uh, a bunch of times during combat because obviously you can't because it incurs that 20 second cooldown. Uh, but after you've got Hunter's Mark out there on something, then use your explosive shot, then death chakram, then volley, and then you're going to have salvo macroed into your volley, then your true shot macro then aim shot rapid fire and aim shot and the beautiful thing about having our two and four set uh, coupled with the way that this opener works you'll have volley the entire time you have true shots since you get those uh, rapid fires back so 
that's going to be so nice. So you drop your volley out and then that's going to just start this all off where then you go rapid fire and then rapid fire is going to give you volley and then uh, your rapid fires will constantly be coming off of cooldown thanks to the way true shot works. And so you're going to be weaving in aim shots, rapid fires, volleys, and it's going to be spraying on everything. So at this point, this might be a great time to have light ammo in your kit, but we'll have to see what some of these pulls look like in Mythic Plus where this is going to be used the most. Now let's go ahead and check out the next section of my video. And I will put links down below at a later date once I start getting some good Mythic Plus runs and some good single target examples for you guys when I have my 2 and 4 set so you guys can see just how much damage these openers can really do. And every time I get to this section, you guys always get overloaded by so much information. There's so many consumables and enchants for you uh, here in Dragonflight. So with your flask, you want to pick either Corrupting Rage or Tepid Versatility. If you feel like you're going to die, Tepid Versatility is the way to go, hands down. If you are an alchemist or you feel like living life on the edge and taking a little bit of damage and doing a lot more because of it, Corrupting Rage is going to be the way to go. For your potions, you want to make sure and use ultimate powers like we have been for the last couple of uh, seasons. For your food, we did switch this away from main stat. Main stat's still perfectly fine. At the end of the day, this isn't going to be a huge damage increase, but you could start using the Sizzling Seafood Medley, which gives you both haste and mastery, assuming you're not going to hit diminished returns. For your cloak and your bracers, we put avoidance on both of those. For your chest, waking stats is usually the way to go, but for me, for example, I used Accelerated Agility at the end of Season 2. That being because uh, my Neltharians called a Dominant its trinket actually slowed me and the accelerated agility stopped that slow or at least uh, kind of broke even if you will uh, then for boots i pick planes runners breeze because i like movement speed over the a little bit of bonus uh, health or stamina for your rings you can pretty much pick whatever works for you in your build so haste crit or mastery uh, this is basically something you just don't want to hit diminished returns on. And for your legs, Fierce Armor Kit Rank 3 is the way to go. For gems, the Crafty Yozimerald. Unfortunately, I forgot to put the Fierce uh, a Limited uh, Diamond. It's going to be the main stat and haste. Um epic gem you can have one of and then for your weapons just make sure your weapon enchant is going to be the high intensity thermal scanner rank three and your weapon oil will be the completely safe rockets and i did forget to put this on the video uh unfortunately but for your embellishments very very important for you on your hunter uh for me at the very beginning i'm still going to be running uh with one blue silk um lining and then i'm going to be running with my my cloak my spore cloak spore cloak got heavily nerfed i'm still going to be using it until i get a good upgrade from mythic plus or for raid uh, but for you guys uh, i would try to get two of the blue silk lining it's going to increase your damage significantly when you're above 90 percent health thanks to that bonus amount of mastery and now let's go ahead and check out the next section of the video which is going to be talking really quickly about out my weak auras and add-ons and then we'll finish this video off in style and this last section is going to be all about the weak auras and macros that i use from a day-to-day -day basis on my marksman hunter and the macros are up on the screen right now there's nothing that's too game breaking earth shattering if you pick up any of them i would encourage you to put a stop casting macro on some of your abilities and also so that you don't clip your rapid fires that's that's a big thing but then also have a true shot macro as well as macroing your uh, salvo into your volley so that way those are always together since they share the same 45 second cooldown and then finally speaking of weak auras so weak auras are a little bit more important to me the health bar and the focus bar you see in the middle of my screen are both weak auras as well as the buff tracking that you guys see in all of my videos mythic plus raid that sort of thing on the left side so that's what tracks if I have trick shots up, how long my volley is going to be up for, and also for my uh, my bullet storm, uh, I do want to make sure and, and track that since we will be using that for AOE. But then finally, uh, my duration left of true shot. It's very, very important, and that allows me to, to eke out a few extra abilities at the very end of my true shot when I'm doing the most damage with it possible. So I will go ahead and put all of that in a text document down in my Discord. So I put a link down in the description of the video. Go ahead and, and join the Discord, and then it'll be 
be off to the left side. There should be like an add-ons, weak auras, macro section. Just download uh, the document plug and chug on your end and hopefully you guys get some value out of these weak auras as well. So now we finally got to the end of the guide. Let's hit the outro and get on with 10.2. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. This has been such a fun experience and we've continued to grow the channel each and every tier. So as much as I don't like guide seasons since there's a lot of work for me involved, this is such a rewarding experience. So thank you guys so much. And also consider subscribing if you haven't already and be sure and follow me over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash Mr. Eggplant. Like I said at the very beginning, I have so many projects. I would encourage you guys to at least check them out. Give them a chance. The podcast is so much fun. It's so fun to go back and watch them even though I know what we talk about uh, just to see what uh, other people's input would be and what your feedback would be so valuable. And I'm really excited to push to get to Keystone Hero, get all plus 20 timed uh, portals uh, for this tier and even maybe even get into some mythic rating. We'll just have to wait and see. But best of luck to you here in season three. I hope that you guys get what you want out of your Marksman Hunter. I hope that we are truly not D tier. And even if we are, I'm still going to be playing it and having so much much fun uh, while doing the most damage possible. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.